Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's a weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, <coughs> Excuse me, and it is then posted to our website for you to watch at your convenience. So, um, And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can uh, watch those archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, it really runs the gamut. Um, and as the Library Commission, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, we provide services to all types of libraries. So you'll find shows um, geared towards all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives, <coughs> really anything and everything. Our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Um, something cool libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing. Um, we have library commission staff that sometimes do presentations for us about things we're specifically offering, but we also bring in guest speakers. And that's what we have this morning um, with us today is Christine Gale. Good morning, Christine. Good morning. <clears throat> and she is from our Nebraska Community Foundation. And uh, she's going to talk to us about our wonderful, one of our favorite grants, one of mine, <laughs> the Creates Bennett Donor Advice Fund. This is specifically for our little libraries, which we have a lot of those in Nebraska. Most of our libraries are, um, are, are the small ones. So I will just um, hand it over to you, Christy, to tell us, Christine, to tell us about um, what's going on with the grants this year. Well, thank you, Krista. So as she mentioned, I'm Christine Gale with the Nebraska Community Foundation, and I am a community impact coordinator. So I help um, funders make the most impact with their dollars that we can in our communities. And this one specifically, like Krista said, is for small town libraries. Um, I live in North Platte, um, but I do help um, all the communities across the state so I don't have a certain area. So that is who I am but one of the funds that I have been assigned to that is an affiliated fund of the Nebraska Community Foundation is the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advice Fund which was established by an estate gift from Shirley Kreutz Bennett. Um, so as you can see on the screen she was a uh, lifelong learner. She was a teacher. Um, uh, she was very um, interested in academics. She um, was a traveler. She loved to travel with her husband, but they did not have any children. So upon her death, she um, put in her will that she wanted her um, estate, which um, actually had built up to be quite um, extensive even though she truly was a teacher for all of her years but um, she had saved up quite a big um, amount of money that she decided she wanted to do good with in the state of Nebraska and she wanted to follow um, similar to her life that she traveled and experienced and learned a lot of different things and also with her education she thought the best way to do good in the state was to give to smaller communities and she herself grew up in a small community so um, this was a way to give back so she started the um, upon her death it was uh, developed and created as the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund to make grants to rural libraries of 3,000 population or less communities and she named her nieces and nephews as the committee who serve on that donor advised fund and help make the selection. So I am the staff member that is assigned to this fund to just help with the administrative process, but the nieces and nephews are actually the committee who makes decisions on these grants. So um, they, when they develop this grant, um, they have, um, it was never set up to be as a, a, a 
endowment fund where it would be around forever, but instead it is a donor advised fund that was set up to be spent down to zero. And so we are in the final year of the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advice Fund, um, assuming the applications come in. Uh, they have been around for the last um, nine years and during that time have given away almost $600,000 to libraries across the state. So um, the impact that Shirley was able to make truly has been enormous and it's been really fun to um, see all the great things that she has been able to help make happen. So yeah. um, that has uh, been really great to work with this, but uh, all good things must come to an end. So this is our last year. And um, as I mentioned before, that the, the applicants that who are eligible are libraries that are located in Nebraska that are in um, towns with populations of 3,000 um, people or less. But they did uh, decide to create this grant so it can um, be given in three different areas. So um, the three areas are listed there, planning grants, enhancement grants, and facilities grants. So for the enhancement grants and facilities grants, um, libraries do need to be accredited. But the planning grant is actually a grant to assist with um, getting accreditation. So um, I'm sure Krista and um, all of you have dealt a lot with um, what's necessary in order to become accredited. And uh, what the committee realized is that there are some costs associated with accreditation, um, even mm -hmm. though there's lots of things you can select from uh, as it, within the different sections, but there are some time costs for the librarian, mm -hmm. also obviously for the librarian's time to be accredited or to be, I think it's called accredited. Um, mm -hmm. th that takes time and to set up your friends of the library group, that takes time and money. So this grant is to assist with those costs for, and we really want to help out those libraries who are truly trying to become accredited but struggle with some of those costs. So mm -hmm. th this is a smaller grant, but it is, mm -hmm. as you can see, a minimum amount of $500 and a maximum of $2,500. All of um, our grants are one-to-one -one matches, which means that for every dollar given, uh, another dollar in the community needs to be matched. So mm -hmm. if they ask for the $500, then they have to match it with $500. So it can be a $1,000 um, Grant. So in this case, with the 500 being a minimum, which sometimes these grants are really small, but just every little bit counts, it mm -hmm. could be a 25 or a 2005, I'm sorry, a $250 grant and then matched with $250. That would be the smallest, but otherwise. Okay. I did have somebody who had asked about that previously in the email and I was waiting for today. Um, hopefully they will be here to watch that. Yeah, that the the 500 or whatever the minimum of each grant is is like how that the math works out so you could go as low as half of that is all you need to come up with from your library exactly exactly <clears throat> and i also yeah. want to um, be clear about the accreditation too um that is something that i run here at the library commission for our public libraries so um, if you have questions about that you can ask me um there is no fee to apply for accreditation or be accredited but um, there, there could be costs depending on what you're trying to do to earn the points towards your accreditation. Um, so, for example, like there, there is a fee to start a friends group if that was something you wanted to do and earn a few points for that, sure. If you needed to buy books or you needed to subscribe to some online database and that gives you more points towards um, becoming accredited, that would be um, something the grant could help with. Um, the staff time, the salary, uh, Christine mentioned, um, in order for the library to be accredited, the library director needs to be certified, which entails earning continuing education credits, um, going to classes, watching webinars. Um, there might be costs for those. There's lots of free stuff out there, but there is your time. So if you need to get paid for that time or something. So um, lots of things. And there's even more examples on the, um, I believe in the, the guidance document on the Corey's Bennett website. 
Yes, absolutely. And even uh, travel time, I know some things are offered more on Zoom and um, the web now. Yeah. Uh, but if there is a, a seminar that someone needs to go to and it takes time and uh, travel, that mm -hmm. can be used with this grant. Um, and like we have done a few um, grants in the past for something, OneDrive, I think is what you were talking about, the online services. Um, and there, oh, um, there's a cost there. OverDrive. Or, or you know, overdrive, sorry, yes. Overdrive, our, overdrive. Big, our groups, um, group subscription for um, ebooks and audiobooks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so this grant can be used for that as well since that's part of being accredited. So uh, I just put the last bullet here Sterling, Sterling Public Library um, was one of our recipients this past year, and they used this planning grant towards accreditation, towards their process of getting their friends of the library group started. So they received a $500 grant for that, that they matched with $500 for $1,000. So that is the planning grant. The next one is the enhancement grant. And as I mentioned, the next two are for accredited libraries. Um, that's one of the stipulations. This one is a little bit larger. The annual um, amount minimum is $1,000, but maximum of 10,000 this year, which we did lower that a little bit this year because we are winding down this grant um, and we just wanted to make sure that we could do um, multiple grants this year. So we did lower that maximum. If you've been aware of this in the past, just note that. It's also a one-to-one -one match and um, up to 50% of the match, uh, Just is that in kind? I can't read my slide because of our, just a sec, let me move this. Yeah, okay. Uh, so 50% of a match may be in kind, which um, you may have seen in the planning grant, in kind is not permitted and neither is it in the facilities grant, but in enhancement grant, it can. So um, some examples of enhancement match might be um, if, well, I could give an example. Last year we gave for a library um, community garden that they wanted to do on the library grounds. And they had gotten some local businesses to donate the wood for building the raised gardens, but also um, for the dirt and fertilizer. And they got all of that donated and we were able to count that towards their match for in-kind. So um, materials can definitely be used in the enhancement grants. Um, this can also allow you to get um, multi-year and that was also true with the planning grant. Although, um, the, so I guess that is um, important if you received a grant last year or in previous years, you can ask for another grant, but since this is the last year, it really can't be a multi-year going forward because the funds will be um, spent out, I believe. So a couple that's examples. That's the only way it could be considered that we've done a multi-year. We've done, we did, I know we've done this in the past where for some reason, the year of the grant being awarded, something unknown happened and unforeseen happened and we allowed them to wait and do it like the next year it was still absolutely this year's money so that's not really applying for another one it's just yes we'll give you extension because you know nobody could have planned for the fact that something out COVID. of your control <laughs> you couldn't put in the garden for some unknown reason there was a flood we've had that here yeah. <laughs> you gotta wait till next year that's okay but we so actually that, had a ton of that happen um last year and the year before due to COVID. So um, we've extended many of those, but that money is still, we count as spent, even if we haven't right, paid it right. all out. We so. apply for new money. So um, there still could be a chance of an extension to spend it if you can't do it in the next year. Absolutely, absolutely. We're not going away, just the money will be spent. So, <laughs> all right, so um, just- wrap up and, and things to finish out this still. <laughs> Right, right. So just a couple, to give you a couple of examples, the Butler Memorial Library in Cambridge, Nebraska did um, uh, just a smaller grant of 1,500 to upgrade their children's section. And Hastings Memorial Library 
um, in Grant, Nebraska, which both of those are kind of confusing because their libraries are different names than their towns, but um, they did a little bit larger of a grant for a permanent maker space, um, which we've done a lot of those. And this, these pictures are actually of a grant, an enhancement grant that we gave uh, to the Plainview Public Library, and they had gotten a new uh, laser etcher for their um, maker space and these are some of the um, products that they have made over this past year and we just got this yesterday so I wanted to include it but I thought it was a really neat um, uh, display of all the different things they can do now and that they're they're using in their school system but also um, people in the community are able to come and create as well. The last grant is the facilities grant, which again is for accredited libraries. Uh, this one has a little bit uh, a higher minimum of $5,000 just because it seems like facilities grants um, cost a lot more. Um, and then we did lower the maximum to 10,000 this year. Again, the one-to-one -one match with in-kind not being allowed on this grant. And um, so, if you did receive a grant last year and you wanted to reapply, you could, but we just need to stay within the 20,000, which um, probably would not be difficult to do unless you got a $20,000 grant last year. Um, Arapahoe Public Library was one that did receive a facilities grant and it went towards, um, it was a much larger project than um, their $20,000 grant that they received last year, but um, these are some of the things that they did, and these, they just had their open house on April, um, August 6th, I believe, and this is the end product, so some of the Kreutzmann, it's money went towards this renovation, and that is also possible on a facilities grant. It can be for one thing, like getting a, um, ADA door installed if that's something that you need and it's kind of a smaller renovation like that or it could be a part of something larger like this was a community room, uh, ch new children's area and circulation desk and then they added the drive through up in the top right corner and then their front, uh, they redid their whole library. So um, mm -hmm. this went towards that um, and that is possible as well. And that's one of the things too, especially with these larger facilities grants that entail construction and usually are much larger big projects potentially. Um, you can combine different grants to come to complete your project. And I know there was one before, and I forget which library it was, I don't want to mention it wrong, so I'm not going to give the name, but I know there's one library that um, a few years ago, the Kreutz Bennett, they, they had a big amount they wanted and they, the, they were contingent on getting the this grant if they got a library improvement grant from the library commission to help with part of the cost as well basically you know this is a big project we want to make sure you can actually make it happen in the end so did you get some other grant as well and we don't want to put our money towards it and then have it not even happen because you didn't have that other big chunk that you still needed so once we approved them for that grant then they were able to get the grant from the Kreutz Bennett as well so you got to kind of think creatively of what you know if i do this it costs more than what is the maximum for from here look at other grants you can also apply for for part of it <clears throat> yes absolutely and we um besides the library commission grants you can also um pair it up with other grants um there right. have been some communities that have um had it be towards their match of cdbg grants and uh, um, other economic development um, grants, if the library is a part of that, um, then uh, that has worked as well. So obviously these bigger projects do cost more than what this one grant can support, but when you get a few together, that sure does help um, along with private fundraising, which has always been successful for libraries. So um, this is the Ravenna Library, and there was a story that was done last uh, two years ago now on Pure Nebraska on 1011 News and um, it was just talking about the Ravenna Library also had a major 
renovation, but this um, particular room was the part that the Kreutzmann the Donor Advised Fund assisted with them um, uh, renovating. So it was just a piece of a bigger project. So the application process is pretty simple in the world of grants. Um, this is there's a short form that is very easy and just a, a few questions and needs to just kind of get your scope of your project and just double check that you are eligible with all of the um, uh, little guidelines that we have set. Those are due October 1st. And um, after we have a chance to review those probably into about mid-October, we, um, we discuss those and then get back to the applicants to let them know if they are eligible to submit full proposals, which are due in the first part of January. And um, I should have had that on, but the, for the date for 2022 for Kreutz Bennett, I believe is January 11th, but let me double check that. Oh, for when the... Yes, actually it's the 10th, but um, it's a little bit after the first of the year because we just like everyone else aren't ready to roll right away on uh, January 1st. <laughs> so, uh, so we give a little leeway there to get back into it after the holidays. But, um, but uh, you do have to be um, uh, requested to submit that full proposal and that comes from the short proposal. Now, um, October 1st is our deadline, so that's why we do this um, at this point. So we're hoping that some projects are being thought about and that you have time then to submit at least the idea of it. I would say that the short application is fairly simple. So even if you're just kind of starting to hatch your idea, go ahead and put that in and we'll um, you know, we'll ask you for more specifics by January, but that gives you a little bit more time to actually get all those specifics in place. But the guidelines for the applications and the fo application forms are at the Nebraska Community Foundation website there at that, um, at that link, but also they are um, with the Nebraska Library Commission on their site with the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advice Fund link there. Yes. And there is my contact information if you have any questions. I am more than open to hearing just a thought if you're, you've got something going on and you, um, and you'd like to run it by me before you actually dive into doing the paperwork. I am more than willing to um, listen and share some thoughts about what might be qualified or not. Um, I even do do that also when in the short application process, um, just to make sure that people have the best chance of competing, just to make sure that they fit with what the uh, advisors are looking for. So I'll do my best to try to help um, get that money spent out where it needs to go. So. That is what I have today. Our, Krista, are there any questions? Uh, so yeah, we got plenty of time here. Um, um, we do have one question, but then I just wanted to let me know if you have any questions um, about the grant, about any ideas you have, um, go ahead and type into the question section or say, I have a microphone, unmute me. Um, the question we have isn't really related you know, to, to you necessarily, Krista, but someone wants to know about the cost to the library for overdrive what does that cost um since we did mention that um overdrive group um is uh, a group subscription we have uh here through the library commission and there is an annual participation fee of a minimum of 500 dollars uh and it has to but i'm looking at the page here that um <laughs> But for the smaller library, and it, but it's based on population. Um, let's see, for new participants, and this was what the grant was. I think it was the five hundred dollars for uh, Sterling. Wait, no, it wasn't Sterling. Whoever it was that got the grant yeah. to do join Overdrive. Um, it's it's there's actually a per a population charge of the fee per capita. But if your population is three thousand eight hundred and forty six or less. That's a weird number. It's just how the math comes out. Then it's just the minimum of 500, and then there's an that's an annual fee that you would pay. Uh, 
so this grant could help you get your first year, but then of course you'd have to maintain that afterwards every year of an annual participation fee when you do renew to um, stay in the group. So that is something to think about. There's, you know, there's, in this case, it's not a one-time fee. Some of the other things you may be doing to earn your accreditation or to work towards it could be a one-time, but Overdrive itself, you would have to have some way to maintain paying that $500 every year um, if the grant gives you it uh, for the first year. Um, the Library Commission does help pay for a lot of this, uh, the Overdrive group. There is an annual maintenance fee that libraries are not responsible for. Um, originally, it was $12,000 a year, and that does increase each year. So that is, you know, so we do help keep the, the, the Overdrive group going by putting most of the money into it. But as a participant, you do pay that $500 each year. Um, and I think what I'll do here, um, I'm going to, because I did bring up, we can show that, um, news story from about Ravenna. Okay. If we like, because I did uh, go ahead and find that here. Just let me, because I know people who do like to see, I think this is a great story, so yeah. I um, do too. <laughs> let's see here, there's the page. So this is just the link to the news story um, that's still up there about Ravenna Library putting grant funding to good use. And they have a great video here. Bird enjoys bringing her four-year-old son Jasper and her two-year-old daughter Mullen to the Ravenna Public Library. They come here at least a couple of times a week. We enjoy the time. It allows us to read different books. It allows them to have imaginative play. This new $1.4 million library officially opened in August of 2018. The community worked together to make it a reality, but local leaders also utilized grant money. A large grant came from the Shirley Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. They definitely came through and donated $20,000 for us. The Children's Library is now dedicated in honor of the Kreutz Bennett Donor Advised Fund. The fund was established by Shirley Kreutz Bennett. She was a lifelong educator and uh, she was also a world traveler. And she wanted to provide people uh, a world of information just like she had through her travels. And she decided that by investing in libraries, she could do that. When Shirley died, she made a gift to the Nebraska Community Foundation. According to her wishes, every year, uh, a fund advisory committee of her nieces and nephews uh, makes uh, grants and uh, receives applications from the libraries and communities where there are fewer than 3,000 people. Jane Stone is a niece of Shirley Kreutz Bennett, and she is involved with reviewing the applications for the grant money. Every year we give out about, uh, it's about $80,000 a year that we grant out every year. So uh, plenty of funds available for people in their projects. Jane says her aunt would be happy that small town libraries are getting assistance. I think probably the reason Aunt Shirley focused on rural communities is because she was a farm girl herself. She was a 1941 graduate of Harvard High School and our family farms um, still to this day between Harvard and Gilbert, Nebraska. So she, you know, she, I think that's where her heart is. There are a number of requirements for libraries to be eligible for the grants. There is uh, a requirement that libraries need to provide a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, local funding in order to get matching grants. But once the grant money is secured, local <laughs> libraries are finding plenty of ways to use the money. We have um, three different areas that we do grant funding in. Um, one is uh, towards accreditation, and then we also do enhancement grants and facility grants. The Ravenna Public Library is a beautiful facility here in this Buffalo County community. And as you might imagine, it's being used in a number of ways. We are an after-school bus drop-off location, so the school bus brings them to our doorstep every single day after school. We do programming three days a week for those kiddos. Um, we have book clubs for the adults. We have Pinterest nights. And for people like Stephanie, she is just glad that Shirley Croyd's Bennett Donor Advice Fund played a role in building a library in Ravenna, where her kids can start the journey of learning. Now, a quick note, libraries are being encouraged to apply for the Shirley Croyd's Bennett Donor Advice Fund. The initial deadline is coming up on October 1st. For more information, you can go to NebraskaHometown.org. Well, it really is great to see how this library fund is helping the smaller communities in the state as well. Mm -hmm. 
And so joining us now with more on this is Nebraska Community Foundation Executive Director Jeff Yost. And it's good to see you this morning. Good morning, John. Yeah. yeah. So Jeff, we heard in this previous story about a donor advice fund. Mm -hmm. um, what kinds of projects and programs are sponsored and supported by donor advice funds through the Nebraska yeah. Community Foundation? We can use philanthropic dollars for all sorts of public good purposes. Libraries, K-12 education, early childhood development, youth engagement, aging in place, economic development, leadership development, entrepreneurship, training and work. I mean, we just, we've done that sort of work in lots and lots of communities all over the state for years, and it's really fun to see the difference it makes. Um, with libraries in particular, this is, libraries are one of the main pieces we have to help communities uh, not have a digital divide in their place. Um, so libraries are actually more important than they've ever been. Yeah, I know we're uh, talking to them and they were saying, hey, libraries are not about books, just about books anymore. Yeah. A lot more going on. Um, when it comes to a donor advice fund, can the donor choose to remain anonymous? Yes. We have a number of donors who have chosen to remain anonymous uh, for a short period of time, or maybe that's their, their wish indefinitely. So we're happy to protect that donor confidentiality if that's what somebody chooses to do. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone out there is watching right now and they want to maybe establish a donor advice fund in their hometown. How could they do that? Mm -hmm. uh, they can contact any of us at the Nebraska Community Foundation. Um, or they could talk to one of the affiliated fund leaders in their community. We work in about 250 communities around the state. So we probably have a friend or a neighbor that's now connected to the Nebraska Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. I know in my, my town of Pender, there are lots of people connected. Yeah, so it's, sure. it's a network across the state. Yeah, and uh, the website again is nebraskahometown.org. Okay. And the telephone number is 402-323-7330. Is that a, is that That's it. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> yes. And even even for a couple of years even ago, for a little bit older video, it, all the information there is correct. I guess there's just a couple of things if I might add. Um, I, I wanted to go back to the facilities grant. There are a few things that we stipulate that you cannot use the facilities grant for. And, and that's mainly uh, that is in the guidelines, but it's mainly things um, that we believe are re the responsibility of the owner of the facility. So that may be the village or city, it may be the friends group, um, but we don't want this money to be used to like try to offset the community having to spend tax dollars because we do believe there is a certain responsibility that every community has to maintain and keep up their library. So. Um, those things are listed there, uh, gutters, roofing, um, sidewalk, t just plain sidewalk repair is not covered, but if it's a part of a renovation, it can be. Um, but the HVAC system is the part that's really challenging because I know there are a lot of older libraries that are really struggling with that because those um, systems are starting to fail. But unfortunately, this grant, doesn't help towards just um, replacing an HVAC system. But um, I just wanted to point that out, that there are a few restrictions. But generally speaking, this is a pretty open grant uh, process. And, and then the last thing I guess I'd like to say, unless there are more questions, is just that, you know, Shirley was a very humble person and who lived a, a very, um, I would just call it a normal life, and um, but she left an extraordinary gift, and you may not have expected that from Shirley if you knew Shirley um, in her lifetime. So who knows where the next Shirley Kreutz Bennett is, and if you, um, you know, you in your communities probably run across people who have the potential to do the same kind of work, if not for libraries all across the state like Shirley did, at least for your particular library. And so that um, is something I just want you to all keep in mind. And if you think that there is someone out there like that and um, you're not sure how to handle that, 
feel free to reach out to the Nebraska Community Foundation because that is what we do. We hold a lot of specific funds designated for specific communities or even facilities like libraries or um, community centers. And um, if your friend's uh, foundation is not equipped to handle something like that, that's where we really like to help these smaller communities and um, you could become affiliated with us like the Kreutzmann and Donor Advice Fund did. So since this one's coming to an end, I just would like to encourage everyone to be looking out there for their own Shirley Kreutzmann. <laughs> Yeah, and um, that's why I, I do like that, even though that article, that uh, story, news story about Ravenna is a couple of years old, it does have that bit at the end with Jeff Yost talking about how anyone can, if you have, you know, come to the Nebraska Community Foundation to figure out how they may want to give away some of their money they've, they've saved, or um, so, you know, think about that, or if you know someone in your community who's trying to figure out what do I do once I pass away, or, you know, with their estate. Um, but also for libraries, um, you know, we mentioned that um, Sterling did use the Crates Bennett grant to set up their friends group. Um, libraries can also have foundations as well that um, help to, um, you know, sometimes at the library, they, they don't have the bank account or the, to be able to handle their finances. Um, things, to handle donations, not their basic budget, of course, that, you know, deals right. with the city. There's always donations and grants and things, and you need some organization, somebody to handle that. And having a friends group or a foundation do that is really helpful. We highly encourage that for all libraries to have something like that to help supporting the library. And then Rasa Community Foundation can help you set one of those up for your library if you don't have one yet. And then, you know, you have an expert in financing, in finances, who can keep track of all this for you, you know. As a small town library director, you probably don't know how to do that. I know I don't. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There is kind of an expertise to it. But for instance, Ogallala has a, um, the Ogallala Library has a foundation um, fund account with us, and they just built an, a brand new facility as well in Ogallala. But they um, they have an unrestricted endowment fund with us. And what that means is they get a payoff each year from the amount of money that they have raised. And that money can be used for that library. Um, and they've specified that it would be for maintenance and upkeep of this new facility. So they know that the money that they've invested in this brand new facility, that it will continue to be maintained 100 years from now because um, unrestricted endowment fund or endowment funds in general are forever. So there's always a payout. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's something that we can help with. Um, and, and we highly encourage when new facilities are being built that they consider a maintenance fund of some sort so that there is always the insurance that those will become maintained. But I, I always love the I love the facilities grants, but I really love the planning and enhancement grants as well. The, the creativity that librarians have around the state it has been amazing, and we have seen so many really cool projects that um, this grant has helped come to fruition. And uh, so I love to continue to see those creative grants um, offered. And then, you know, planning, like I said, I, I actually lived in the town of Bassett, which is 600 people um, for nine years. And I, I know how hard it is to become accredited and to have a part-time librarian or a volunteer librarian and how to um, move to that next level. So I'm really pleased that this this grant does allow for some funding towards that as well. And some villages sometimes worry about, oh, I don't know if we can allow the librarian to spend that much time to try to get accredited. They're worried about mm -hmm. um, payment for their hours, and that's where this grant can help. So hopefully that's answered some they, questions. They already have a limited budget, and it just covers them keeping the library open. Right. And now we, what about the extra time that might take to do other things? Yeah. Absolutely. You can have additional hours added to the librarian's time specifically for these purposes. Yeah. And while we're talking about accreditation, I will mention, um, let's see what this link open it up. Yes. Um, so we'll go to the main accreditation page here, yeah. Uh, as you can see here, we got a big red blur due to COVID, as is a lot of things. Um, the main 
accreditation program where we have every year libraries can be accredited are accredited for three years so every three years you do a renewal due to covid we have extended that twice now um, and gave everyone an extra in the end now two years to um for renewing if you're already an accredited library so there will not be a renewal accreditation process until next year but this year and sometime later this month i'm working on it we will be opening up what I call like a mini accreditation process, process modified, <laughs> um, for any new libraries that want to become accredited for the first time. Um, we don't want them to have to wait longer to start getting the benefits of being able to apply for grants like this or anything. So um, for anyone who has not been accredited before, um, I will be reaching out to those libraries to say, okay, this year, 2021, we're doing a special thing just for you um, to get you on board. So. Um, Look for that if you are not an accredited library that will be coming to you soon from me. Um, so this uh, suspension is for renewals of already accredited libraries. Yeah. Um, there are just some very basic qualifications to become accredited. Um, this is this, the short uh, basic thing that's not a lot. Um, be legal, uh, follow all the rules, have a board and library director that are certified. Those are certified programs we do here for the Library Commission. You do have some local funding that you get. Um, the public library survey is a very important survey. Um, most of our libraries do that every year. Um, you submit that every year and that data is used to determine your accreditation. Um, you have to pay your staff who's there. So there's some basic things here. And then beyond this, and I'm not gonna go into the details, I just wanna quickly show this for anyone who's interested. There are, um, after you meet these 12 requirements, then there are points you can earn depending on what you do in your library. And there is a uh, preview application here you can see for all the different things and that like overdrive is mentioned and having an online catalog and other things you do. You can look at that anytime you want to and ask me any questions if you want to about that. So, uh, any other any questions about the Creates Bennett Fund? Um, type in your questions if you're interested in it. Do you have any thoughts, any ideas of I am projects you may want to use it for? Um, I did have that one emailed question that we already answered uh, from the library about how the the match works. We we, we answered that question. Um, you did, someone did ask about OverDrive. This is just our OverDrive webpage on our Library Commission website. If you search for OverDrive, you can find this. This is all about joining the group. So if you're interested in that, this is all the details um, about that. Uh, Susan Nisley and Deborah Dragos here at the Library Commission handle all of everything with the OverDrive group. And while I'm here on the Commission page, I'll also uh, this is something that Christine showed in her slides. We do have this uh, flyout menu here, menu here about grants, um, all sorts of different grants that you can um, apply for. Um, the Christ Bennett one being here, and we mentioned the community development block grants. That is something else. Oh, links here a little wonky. Um, that, that libraries can apply for for facilities type things if you wanted to. Um, the USDA gives out facilities grants and libraries are eligible for those as well. So if there's something that Kreutz Bennett can't do or you know you need something in combination, those are ones you can look into. Um, those are also both through um, well, USDA and then uh, Department of Economic Development <laughs> do both of those. Those are not grants that are going away like Kreutz Bennett. So if you're, maybe you're not ready this year to jump on the Kreutz Bennett one, look to those um, and I know some people have been um, we have our ARPA funding here while we're talking about money I will mention this um, we have ARPA grant money American Rescue Plan Act money that was allotted to the Nebraska Library Commission from the Museum of Institute of Museum and Library Services and um, some of the money is available right now in our formula grace based grants uh, and amounts that have been, um, been allotted to libraries, but we will have coming up library improvement grants and youth grants for excellence also using the same funding. Um, and we have had many libraries mentioned to ask about what they can apply for. Um, one thing that you can't use, we can't allow libraries to use this funding for because it's federal money and the federal money has rules is things like construction, which the Kreutz Bennett does have allow you to do, like installing things, up, you know, new circulation desk, that kind of thing. That's just a, a one of the cutoffs for um, federal funding that we receive. 
um, from the library services and technology act money where this is all coming through um, so if we have told ted to tell you when you asked about something you want to do through arpa no sorry because that's construction turn around and apply for points benefit they can do that or the other two <laughs> grants there's you've got other options um the, the block grants and the usda grants um and even other ones that are out there too so um don't just stop because we said no <laughs> there's other um things out there we just have certain rules that are laid to, you know, down to us about these grants about this yeah. funding there. Yeah. It does see, seem like the small silver lining of what we've been going through is that there is a little bit more money now available for libraries. So we know this isn't going to last forever. So I say jump on it while you can and, and share that with your village that now's the time because this money is yeah. available. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll talk, since we have some time, I will talk a little bit about this. I want to make sure we get the word out about this, the, these, this ARPA funding. Um, but if you have current questions for Christine, questions about Chris Bennett, get them in there right now and ask us. Um, I've, I'm watching for the questions here. But um, as you can see here, the Library Commission was given about $2.4 million. Part of it we're using for these formula grants. 1.4 of it we are giving out to libraries. This is not a grant where you apply and say, here's a project I want to do. Do you approve the project? I get evaluated and we decide. This is just um, it's more similar to state aid money where are you a library? Do you want your money? Just let us know and we'll give it to you. This money has already been allotted. It's been divvied up amongst all the libraries. Here is a list of the libraries. The amount your library can get is on here as well. So this is not a competition. This is not a competitive grant where anyone evaluates it. This is just do you want your money? Let us know. We'll send it to you. Um, the minimum payment, the minimum amount is $3,750, so everyone gets that a minimum, and then there's a per capita amount on top of that based on your population. So check here and see if your library is listed. You can see here, too, we are keeping track of um, the process, the application status. Um, in process, we've received the application. Um, here already you can see Atkinson has already gotten its money. Um, this is a really quick turnaround we're doing on these formula grants here. As soon as you send in your application, Sam Shaw, who's working on this particular grant, uh, just checks it over and makes sure it's all good and correct and, and passes it immediately onto our accountant here who immediately starts the payment process. A week or two, you have the money and then you can start spending it on whatever um, you need. So um, check this to see what your library can get. Uh, we do have, um, oh, okay, all legally established public libraries in the state are eligible. You do not need to be accredited. Um, in addition, um, state-run institutions and tribal libraries, I was trying to remember exactly, the, are eligible for this as well. You have until the end of this year to uh, request your formula grant money, December 31st. There is a list here of a lot of things you can apply for, but I wanted to bump down to um, other requirements. Yes, there is no match required for this. Yay, everybody cheer. Um, for our grants that we've give, we give out here at the Library Commission, usually library improvement grants, C, or uh, not C, youth grants, um, there's always been a 25% match. For this grant, there is no match required because IMLS is not requiring us to do any match for anything. So you ask for that money, you just get that full amount of money. You don't have to match anything with that. You just get it all to spend. Um, but we have a long list here of the kind of things you can apply for. Uh, this is kind of an extension. I think it's the next step of after the CARES Act grants we did last year. If some of you remember, we did do CARES Act grants. They were competitive grants. We had a lot less money that we'd given us from the CARES Act last year. That was only about $173,000 rather than $2.4 million. Um, so some of the same things that you applied for, if you didn't apply last year or you didn't get were approved with a CARES Act from us last year or your grant was reduced because we had a limited amount of funding, same kind of things you could get request again this year and it's related to responding to the pandemic. That is the key. Um, cleaning supplies, furniture that you can move around, outdoor furniture, 
um, air purifiers now, signage about things, um, those touchless water station, water bot, um, stations, touchless hand sanitizer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anything related to IT, you can see all these things listed. You're going to do hotspots. You're going to buy new computers for the library. It's much more expanded this year beyond the CARES Act. CARES Act was we're in the middle of the pandemic. What do you need for safety and what do you need to do digital or remote um, you know, services? But now some libraries are opening and they have other needs. Um, you can also do collections. You can buy print books if you if your budget has been cut or you know you've got had a restriction because of COVID. Um, you can buy any collections, anything you circulate, um, technology for upgrading your meeting rooms, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many things um, here that you can apply for. So submit your little application. Here it is. Your basic info, what kind of library are you? Are you legally established? Means two things, that um, your city established a library and you've got a board. You do have to have what is called a DUNS number, Dun & Bradstreet number. You can look that up here if you have one or if your city has one, either one of those will work. It's just required to do business with the federal government. Um, you may have one and not realize that we've discovered. <laughs> um, you just need to enter that. If you're doing anything internet related, you do need to be SIPA compliant, but only if you're doing something that relates to connecting to the internet. Um, and that's it. Everything else here is just all of the legalese. Yes, 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 we agreed to all of that. And then at the bottom, you sign it. <laughs> all electronic. Um, and that is it. There is no follow-up application to submit or agreement to sign. This serves the purpose as your agreement to participating in this. You will need to submit, after you do make your purchases, copies of your invoices to us. And then there's going to be a final completion report sometime next year of how it all worked out for you. So this is money already allotted to your library. You just have to ask us for it. So do it. It's, we've, it's free money. It's just there waiting for you. You just have to let us know you want it. We want to make sure that we have this entire list here. Everybody says paid, 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 paid. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't leave money on the table. No, no, exactly. Yes. Um, something that libraries have been cons have asked about that I'll mention too is, remember I told you this is a very quick turnaround. We have had libraries say, I, what if I want to not receive the money until next year's fiscal year? I want it in next year's budget because we're getting to the end of this year's budget and it really needs to be there. That's perfectly fine. Just wait to do your application. I mean, I know I just told you do it, but like I said, as soon as you submit this application, we immediately start your process of payment. So, so if you don't want the money until October or November, go ahead and do your application then and then you'll get your money. Um, that's perfectly fine. Um, like I said, we're giving you until the end of the year to ask for this funding. The other thing I might add is this funding could be used as the match for Croyd Spinet. If you got this yes. funding and then mm -hmm. um, wanted to ask for Croyd Spinet, it could be used as the match because it's now your your extra funds. So mm -hmm. yes, it could be. Um, we've actually also had libraries ask for similar. Um, can it be used as um, for anyone who does E-rate, which is getting discounts from the federal through the FCC on internet services? And there's um, E-rate pays for a certain percentage, and then the library is responsible for that extra percentage. Like you get an 80% discount, you're responsible for the extra 20. This could be used for that extra 20 for just this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, this all does have to be spent out before September of next year. So this isn't a this is like an immediate way you need right now thing. And like Christine said, this is. This is available now, like CARES Act was available next last year and only for that year. Grab it now while it's here. Next year, there's no guarantee that this kind of money will be available again. So if you've ever been iffy about applying for something or you were not accredited, so you couldn't apply for our grants usually, this is the time to jump on this and do it. You know, figure it out, decide what you're gonna do with it. Think big, <laughs> you know, start dreaming and um, get your money here. Um, also, we will have, as I said, library improvement and youth grants for excellence that later this month as well, opening up using some of this money as well, which means now this year only, both of these grants open to any library in the state, not restricted to accredited like previously, and both of these grants, youth and library improvements, no match required. You ask for $20,000 to upgrade your um, online um, circulation system, you get $20,000. You don't have to put up anything. That would be a library improvement grant. You ask for 
$2,000 to run some youth uh, Lego club, you get $2,000. You don't have to put up any money to match that. So look for both of these to open up this later this month as well and apply for them. Think about things you want to do. These are multiple pots of money you've got out there to look for. These three grants, the Kreutz Bennett grants, um, the USDA and the, you know, these three and the Kreutz are all uh, this year one-time thing. So I'd say think about these first because they're only going to be, they're going to go away. Um, but think about what you can do with them and where you want to use your money for. The youth grants are specifically for youth and teen services. Library improvement grants have some restrictions on what you can do. Um, the formula grants are a little broader. So if you have a youth program you want to do, think about applying for youth grant. Don't use your formula grant money for that. Use that for something else at the library. We plan on both of these grants. You'll have answers by the end of October about if you have been approved and funded. So you will have time to this to learn, did I get the youth grant? Okay, then I know that money goes to youth and my family grant can go to other things. Same thing for live improvement. There's our plan. They both will open up this month. And we will have answers to you by the end of October. So you still have a couple of months to then decide how you're going to use all of this. All right, anybody have any questions? We're almost at 11 o'clock. If you have questions about any of the ARPA funding, let me know. But if you have questions about Kreutz Bennett, talk, you know, ask your questions now. Um, definitely look into applying for this one. Um, I'm kind of sad it's going away. I know the nieces and nephews are kind of like, yay, we did it, finally. <laughs> we gave away all the money, but it has been a great thing for our, especially being focused on those small and rural libraries that sometimes I'm sure feel they're not, not as, um, Absolutely. Helped as much, you know, they need them a lot of help, yeah. Um, it's definitely bittersweet, but it's nice to know that one woman was able to do this kind of funding for 10 years. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting me be on your show and um, share some information. And I hope that a lot of different libraries will reach out and be a mm -hmm. part of this. I'm glad we had a lot of interest today in today's, sh in today's show with people registering and attending. So I'm sure we'll get some applications in and you'll probably be hearing, you know, when people think about it, what they want to do, definitely reach out to Christine um, to ask, you know, what about this? What about that? Can I apply for this? Absolutely. Um, and I are happy to help you with any of that. All right. It doesn't look like anybody does have any desperate questions. So I am going to wrap up today's show. Here's our Encompass Live main page. As I mentioned, um, these are our upcoming shows, and here is where our archives are. This is where today's archive will be. Most recent one goes to the top of the page. Uh, so today's show will be listed there. Uh, should be up and ready for you by the end of the day tomorrow. I will send everyone who attended today and, pre -reg and registered for today's show an email letting you know when the recording is ready. Um, we will also have a link to the slides that Christine used. Um, She'll, you, you'll email them to me when you get a chance, <laughs> Christine. I'll um, do that. And the entry there and our archives will have the same um, description here. So you have a link right here to the um, grant page for you as well. While I'm here in the archives, I will show you there is a search feature here. So you can search all of our previous shows we've done if you like. You can type in any keyword you want and it'll search the descriptions and the um, presenters' names and everything. Uh, I will, um, you'll see there is, you can search the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you just want current information. Um, that is because this is our full show archive. I'm not gonna scroll all the way down, but as you can see, the days go by back pretty far. Um, this is all of our show archives going back to when we first premiered Encompass Live, which was in January, 2009. That's, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and we have all of our archives here. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date. They all have a date of when it was originally done. Um, some of the you know, sessions will stand the test of time, um, but some things will become outdated. Some services may have changed drastically. Um, programs may be different, links might be broken. Some things might not exist at all anymore. Um, some services or resources or anything. So just pay attention to the date of when you are watching something. But uh, we'll always keep, our full show archives on here as long as we can, as long as it's a place to host us. Um, you know, we're librarians, that's what we do. We keep things out there for historical purposes oftentimes. We also have a Facebook page. I've got a link here, but I've got to open up over here where we do post 
um, reminders. Here's a reminder of today's show. Uh, a little thing about speakers. Reminders when here's last week's recording available. Um, and anything else we think may be of interest to libraries. So um, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there and you'll get reminders of when we're doing shows, what's coming up. We also use the hashtag and come live, a little abbreviation on Twitter and Instagram to um, promote the show as well. So you can also just look for that hashtag if you like. Oops, here's my income live tag. There it is. <laughs> So that'll wrap it up for today's show. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about books. Uh, you can sign up for any of our upcoming shows here. You see, I've got August booked. I've got some more September dates to fill in. Keep an eye on here for when I get things um, finalized. Um, we do take one week off every week. That is when our Nebraska Library Association conference is. So we are here 51 weeks a year. So October 13th is when our half part virtual, part in-person um, State Library Association conference is happening. So we will not be here on Encompass Live. Um, go ahead and register for that conference. Uh, next year, next week is one book for Nebraska kids and teens. Um, you know, there's one book for Nebraska, one book, one Nebraska programs, one book, whatever your city is. Um, but we here at the Library Commission, Sally Snyder has for um, years been doing a, a same program, specifically recommending books for kids and teens to do a specific program for them. So uh, these are our titles for 2021 and 2022 have been selected. So she will be here along with Amy Owen, um, one of our reference staff, able to talk about um, this year's program and next year's titles. And they have a lot of resources and, and uh, games and things online that you can use to do a one book for Nebraska for your kids or teens. So please do sign up for that and any of other future shows. Thank you everybody for being here with us this morning and hopefully we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye. Bye-bye.